The Silver Surfer was created in 1966, first appearing in Fantastic Four issue 48. Created by Stanley and Jack Kirby, Surfer is a product of the Marvel method, a collaborative technique at Marvel in which Kirby would work on a brief synopsis and draw individual scenes and plot details, and then Lee would add dialogue and captions. When the two were working together on the Galactus trilogy story arc, which introduced Galactus, Kirby handed over his pencil art for the story. And to Lee's surprise, there was the Silver Surfer, a character they had never discussed. A character that Lee called a nut on some sort of flying surfboard. Kirby believed Galactus should have some sort of herald, a fallen angel to his godlike character. So today we're diving into some tidbits about the character that you may not have known with our list of the top 10 Silver Surfer shocking facts. Let's get to it. Starting us off in at number 10, Origin. Before the Silver Surfer became the Silver Surfer and Galactus's herald, he was a mortal the name of Norin Rad from the planet Zenla. Zenla was considered a utopia, a planet free of crime, disease, hunger, poverty, and desires. Norin was named after the scientist responsible for eliminating barbarianism from the planet. A young astronomer, he grew restless, wanting more of a challenge in life, and buried himself deep in the history of Zenla's struggles and past. Challenges would find him though, and his life changed forever thanks to an alien spacecraft that broke through Zenla. Zenla's defenses. Norin convinced the Council of Scientists on Zenla to let him go up into the spacecraft to find out what was there. Turns out, it was Galactus. In an act of heroism, Norin offered to become Galactus's herald in exchange for the cosmic entity to not eat Zenla. Galactus accepted this offer, and for almost a hundred years, the Silver Surfer served Galactus, doing his best to find planets that were energy rich and devoid of sentient life, an increasingly difficult goal that eventually caused conflict between Surfer and Galactus. But more on that later. And at number nine, his parents. If that weren't tragic enough, this fact will definitely make you feel for poor Norin. His parents both committed suicide on separate occasions. His mother was the first to take her life. Almar Rad committed suicide when Norin was a young child, feeling as if her life on their home planet of Zenla was too perfect, in a Stepford Wives kind of sense, and she was ill suited to its stifling environment. Her death was accounted for in Silver Surfer Volume 3, Issue 57 in 1991, where during a battle with Thanos, the two take a tour throughout the Surfer's memories. After she died, his father, Jartrand, raised Norin, and fathered a child with another woman, a boy named Fennin. Jartrand was the leader in the Civil War on Zenla. He raised Norin to be intellectual, encouraging him to seek knowledge and achievement rather than pursue hedonistic desires. His suicide was prompted by an accusation that he had committed idea theft. And at number 8, his speed. Surfer is exceptionally fast. He can travel 500,000 light years within a matter of seconds. He has pulled off extraordinary feats with his speed before, including shattering through several walls of vibranium, causing them to explode on contact with him when they collided. He can be anywhere in the galaxy within seconds, covering what would normally take over 100,000 light years in mere moments. He's flown from one end of the universe to another, and he's proven and capable of time travel in the past too. And at 7 is Bored. One of the reasons why fans disliked the Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer movie was because of how Surfer was depicted, among many other reasons let's be fair. Anywho, in the movie Surfer gets his powers from his board, which is far from the case in the comics. In the comics, he acquires his board when he becomes Galactus's herald, with it being made out of the same materials he was constructed out of, just for an easier mode of transportation. Now Jack Kirby had actually included the surfboard because he was tired of drawing spaceships. But back to what it can do though, it's a very powerful object. Object. It's mentally linked to Surfer, and he uses mental commands to control it whenever it's not within his immediate vicinity. Surfer can literally trap living matter within his board, and then destroy that living matter. He wants to the Hulk with it so hard that it knocked him unconscious. That was in Tales to Astonish issue 93. The board is nearly impervious, although once in the comics, Hercules broke it and then used it to murder Surfer. But whenever the board gets damaged or destroyed, Surfer just creates another one, having the ability himself to manipulate matter. Up next, number 6, Sustenance. The Surfer does not need anything to sustain himself. He can converts matter into energy, meaning he doesn't need food or air or water, sleep, all the other things that other living organisms require. Galactus encased the surfer's body in a life-preserving silvery substance of his own creation, which shields surfer from the heat, the cold, and a lack of oxygen, stating that not even the all-consuming inferno of the hottest sun would harm him. And our number 5 spot, Carnage Cosmic. In 1998, in The Amazing Spider-Man issue 430 and 431, Silver Surfer became Carnage Cosmic when he bonded with the Carnage symbiote. Carnage escapes captivity when the institute that Cletus Cassidy was being held at cuts its costs, and therefore cuts the funding for the microwave field containing him. Carnage escapes after it's disabled, and Silver Surfer decides to fight it in space in order to keep civilians protected. Once it's revealed that the Carnage symbiote was keeping the cancer in Cletus Cassidy's stomach at bay, the Silver Surfer comes back down to Earth, bonded with Carnage already, with the intention of giving it back to Cassidy. Surfer convinces Spider-Man that it's a good idea, and then encases Cassidy.
intensity and carnage in an ethereal energy shell in order to ensure that the villain won't harm anybody else. Clearly, that didn't last long though. And our number four spot, he cured Bruce Banner. One of the Silver Surfer's abilities is to use the power cosmic to heal others. This includes a time when he healed Bruce Banner of the Hulk, removing all of Bruce's gamma radiation in order to rid him of the big green monster. This happened in Incredible Hulk Volume 1, Issue 250. And fun fact, despite the two characters having met one another in the past, this issue is written as if it's the first time that Hulk has met the Surfer, leading comic historians to suggest that perhaps the Hulk just didn't remember the Surfer. It might have a bit of a memory issue. Anywho, Surfer didn't cure Banner in this to help Bruce out though. It was because he was annoyed with Bruce after he tried to get the Hulk to help him break through the force field that Galactus had put around Earth in order to trap Surfer there. Unfortunately for Bruce though, he wasn't able to survive without the Hulk, meaning Surfer had to reinstate the radiation and return Hulk to him. There was also a point where Surfer cured Rhino of the condition that gave him his abilities too. He's also been known to regenerate himself and his board from time to time, and uses the power cosmic to do so. He can even revitalize or evolve organic life on a planet wide scale, as seen in Silver Surfer Volume 3, Issue 104. And while he's capable of healing living organisms, Surfer actually isn't capable of reviving the dead. So I guess he wins them, you lose them. Let's get existential with our next number in at 3, Black Holes. Not so much for Silver Surfer though. So the Silver Surfer can survive traveling through a black hole. That's impressive as f. If you were sucked into a black hole, the gravitational pull would stretch your body apart, with the stretching being so potent that your body would be completely torn apart before you could even get really far inside of a black hole. Not only can Silver Surfer survive traveling through or being around a black hole, he can also create them, which is pretty darn terrifying. Surfer is capable of surviving in almost any environment, which includes traveling through deep space and hyperspace without needing any sort of protection. Moving on to number two, his emotions. One of the Silver Surfer's most notable traits is that his emotions are less intensive than human emotions. While he was serving Galactus as his herald, Galactus's destruction of the first planet that Silver Surfer found for him almost drove the Surfer mad. This caused Galactus to alter the Surfer's mind, which suppressed Noren's memories and emotions. This adjustment made it easier for Noren to explore the galaxy and offer up inhabited worlds to Galactus, which also included Earth. But that does not mean that he's emotionless. If anything, Surfer is incredibly sensitive to the emotions around him, having the ability to sense the emotions of humans and perceive those emotions empathetically. Sometimes these emotions are overwhelming for him, feeling them as if he were a living magnet. But that's more so in his later comic appearances, after he uh, gets into a bit of a fight with Galactus. And finally, at number one, perhaps our most trivial fact the UN. Back in 2004's Silver Surfer Volume 5, Issue 5, Surfer is given citizenship to every single country in the world as a means of a thank you from the United Nations. So let's backtrack a sec. In the series, he saves the Earth from his home planet, Zen La. And several different UN representatives from various countries wanted to give him the gift of nationality to their countries. This included Wakanda. Honda, France, Egypt, Japan, Russia, China, and India. Later on, the rest of the world follows suit and he would gain the citizenship to the other remaining 189 countries, which is a pretty nice gesture if you think about it. I mean, how do you give a gift to an individual who can theoretically have any material object he wanted? Give him something intangible and meaningful, of course. Alright, there we have it, friends. Which of these facts surprised you? Which other Silver Surfer facts do you think we should have included on our list? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know your thoughts. If you dug this video, hit that like button, share it with a friend, and if you're new, subscribe to Top 10 Nerd. We'd love it if you hung out with us some more. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.